Welcome back to a chapter today. Happy Sunday, first day of a new week. And I pray that you have uh, or are having a good weekend because um, um, later on it's going to be the end of your weekend as we know it. But anyway, I pray you have a blessed week ahead. We are going into 1 Samuel chapter 9 today. And just to recount what took place in chapter 8 that we read yesterday, Samuel is now older. His sons, his two sons, Joel and Abia, are not walking in his ways, which means they are just going aside and doing their own things. Very much the same pattern with uh, Eli and his two sons. Um, the people or the elders of Israel come together and tell Samuel that they want a king. Because I guess now they are getting a little disheartened maybe with some of these judges that are coming up in Israel. They are not... Um, reputable <laughs> and I don't blame them for that but I think they also were looking at the other nations who were being ruled by kings and they wanted to follow suit so they no longer wanted God to give them someone to guide them they wanted to choose one for themselves so God told Samuel don't feel badly they're not rejecting you as a prophet they're rejecting me as God and give them what they want but first let them know what is going to take place when they do get a king let them know like god said protest solemnly but still the people said we want a king we don't care what is going to happen in other words okay so let's see what goes on now chapter 9. now there was a man of benjamin whose name was kish the son of abiel the son of zero the son of bekorath the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. And the asses of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to Saul, his son, Take now one of the servants with thee, and arise, go seek the asses. And he passed through Mount Ephraim, and passed through the land of Shalisha, but they found them not. Then they passed through the land of Shalim, and they were not there. And he passed through the land of the Benjamites, but they found them not. And when they were come to the land of Zuf, Saul said to his servant that was with him, Come, and let us return. Lest my father leave caring for the asses and take thought for us. And he said unto him, Behold now, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Now let us go thither, peradventure he can show us our way that we should go. Then said Saul to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring the man? For the bread is spent in our vessels, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What we, what have we? Okay, so I'm going to stop here and explain what's happening. There is this young man from the tribe of Benjamin. His father is from the tribe of Benjamin. His name is Saul. We are being introduced, maybe, to the person who will be the very first king of Israel. They are describing him. He seems to be a tall person from his shoulders upward. He's taller than everyone else. They call him a goodly person. Don't know if that meant character-wise or just appearance-wise. Um, his father apparently had asses. Now, asses are what were used by rich people long ago. Today, we see asses being rode by the poor people. Times have kind of reversed. But back in those biblical days, asses were what kings rode on. When we talk about King David on his ass and Saul on his ass and Jesus, when he was going through Jerusalem, rode on ass, a, a donkey, which is another name for an ass. These were used by people of royalty. So they were, how should I say, expensive um, stuff. It's like you having your expensive car today and some, someone stole it. So it's similar to what has happened here. So his father's asses were maybe ran off and he sent Saul and a servant to find them. Okay, so they have been through a lot of different cities looking for the donkeys. 
And finally, the servant said, you know what? I know of a man of God and whatever he says really comes to pass. So let's go check him out. He might be able to help us. Smart thinking. Verse 8. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand the fourth part of a shekel of silver. That will I give to the man of God to tell us our way. So when they go to inquire of Samuel, they would like to take a gift. I guess it's something that people practiced long ago. I, I don't think we do that much anymore. I know some cultures still do it. When you go to visit someone, you never go with empty hands. I remember my mom always used to say that. Never go empty handed to visit someone. Always carry something. And we practice that in the Caribbean too. I remember if someone was coming, we used to end up with a lot of little things brought home from mostly food items. So it's the same thing Saul says, we have nothing to give the man. All our bread is spent. So his servant said, I have a fourth part of a shekel of silver. We will give him that. Verse 9. Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to his servant, Well said, come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was. And as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water and said unto them, Is the seer here? And they answered them and said, He is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now, for he came today to the city, for there is a sacrifice of the people today in the high place. As soon as you become into the city, you shall straightway find him, before he go up to the high place to eat, for the people will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards they eat that be bidden. Now therefore get you up, for up about this time you shall find him. So when they got to the city to look for Samuel, they called the prophet a seer. Now I remember when I was growing up, a seer was someone who did like witchcraft. Yeah, in our culture at that time. When they say we're going to the seer or the, um, we took a term, obia, man, that's a term that we use in Trinidad. That was not a good thing. But that was a term that came off of the Bible for a good um, person who communicated with God. But then, you know, things get turned around. Okay, so that's the interchangeable term, seer and prophet. Okay, um, verse 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before Saul came, saying, Tomorrow about this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain over my people Israel, that he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry is come unto me. And when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of, this same shall reign over my people. Then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for you shall eat with me today, and tomorrow I will let thee go, and will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? So Samuel is talking to Saul about what he already foresaw, what God already told him. Saul has no clue that he's about to be chosen as king. No clue. So this is something that Samuel is now telling him. And I'm sure Saul doesn't even understand what's going on. Verse 21. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the tribes of the families of Israel of Benjamin? Wherefore then speakest thou so to me? So Saul is a little confused as to why Samuel is telling him about him going to join him to eat in the high places and that he's going to be the desire of Israel. You know, he's saying, I'm the least of the least. Very humble at that time. <laughs> Very humble. He says, the Benjamins, the Benjamites are the smallest tribe. My father's family is the least of the tribe. And now you're telling me all these things? Okay, verse 22. 
And Samuel took Saul and his servant and brought them into the parlor and made them sit in the chiefest place among that, them that were bidden, which were about 30 persons. And Samuel said unto the cook, Bring the portion which I gave thee, of which I said unto thee, set it by thee. And the cook took up the, the shoulder and that which was upon it and set it before Saul. So in the house where they're having this meal that Samuel has invited them to, he's giving Saul a portion that would normally be given to a person of wealth or renown, okay? And Samuel said, Behold, that which is left, set it before thee and eat, for unto this time hath it been kept for thee, since I said, I have invited the people. So Saul did eat with Samuel that day. And when they were come down from the high place into the city, Samuel communed with Saul upon the top of the house. And they arose early, and it came to pass about the spring of the day that Samuel called Saul to the top of the house, saying, Up, that I may send thee away. And Saul arose, and they went out, both of them, he and Samuel, abroad. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us. And he passed on, but stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Wow. So, Samuel is about to let Saul know what is taking place, why he is having special favor in the sight of Samuel at that time. And, um, yep, he's about to give him the news that God has told him, Samuel that Saul would be the person he needs to anoint to be captain or head or king over the people of Israel. And he also let him know that his donkeys returned home to the father, so he needed to stop worrying about them and looking for them. I tell you, God's people, you know they say the way you test a prophet, a true prophet, is to see if what they say comes true. And I have heard many false prophecies from people about things that were to take place and nothing ever happened, including the end of the world. But Samuel is a good prophet, and Saul, we'll hear more about him in the next chapter. So that's the end of chapter 9 of 1 Samuel. Thank you again for listening. Remember, faith comes by the hearing of God's word. Take care. Bye.